high-quality designs are created using surfacing commands in SolidWorks. These commands can seem daunting to use if you're not too experienced. However, many of them are a lot simpler than you may think. For example, many thin-walled bodies like this fan blade are created from just a couple features. Oftentimes, surface bodies are created to be oversized and incorporate twist and curvature, and then they're trimmed back to refine the shape. Then the thin-walled body can be created from thickening the surface. Let me show you how simple it is to use these surfacing tools to create the fan blade. This fan design currently only has the base created and is ready for the fan blades to be added. Since the blades are thin-walled bodies, I can create a surface model of the blade and then thicken it. This is a common procedure when creating thin-walled bodies with custom curvature. The fan blade can be modeled using two surfacing commands. The first will be a loft, which will connect two line segments and provide the twist that the blade needs. The second will be trimming the surface to give the correct blade contour. To begin, I'll create a surface loft between this line that's sketched within the central hub and connect it to the other sketch line located at a fixed distance above it. I'll enable the lofted surface command from the surface tab of the command manager and select both sketch lines to create the loft. This creates a twisting trapezoidal shape, which will be trimmed down later. This looks good for now, so I'll click the green check. To finish the shape of the fan blade, I can trim away some of the corners to create the rounded contour I'm looking for. This simply requires a sketch to be created on a plane that faces the fan blade which will be used as the trim tool in the trim surface command. I'll begin this sketch on the front plane. And I'll convert the edges of the current surface. Some of the edges will be straight, but I want to round the two upper corners. I'll add a sketch fillet of 3 inches to the upper left corner and a sketch fillet of 5 inches to the upper right corner. Now this sketch can be used to trim the twisting surface. I'll enable the Trim Surface command above and all I have to do is select the sketch as the trim tool. I'll change the option to Remove Selections and then select the two upper corners in the graphics area. Now when I click the green check, the surface of the blade is complete, created using only two surfacing commands. Now that the surface is created, I can thicken it and then pattern it around the hub. I'll select the Thicken command above, select the blade surface, and set the thickness, which in this case is a sixteenth of an inch. For now, I'll leave Merge Result unchecked, which will come into play when I pattern the blade. Now when I click the green check, the blade is thickened, and there are two solid bodies in the Feature Manager design tree. To finish up, I'll quickly circular pattern the blade, and then combine them with the hub. I'll enable Circular Pattern from the Features tab of the Command Manager. Select the blade as the body to pattern. Select the hub as the axis of revolution. And set the instances to 4. Lastly, I'll combine all of the bodies. I'll go to the Insert drop down menu under Features and select Combine. Now I'll choose the four blades and the hub in the graphics area, click the green check, and the fan is complete. All of the blades were created using just a few surfacing commands using very simple sketch geometry.